gave you. Remember, you were just a little baby. You don't even remember it. There's the shepherd's seat. What do you think? That's cool. Yeah. And there's an angel. What else have you got? The baby Jesus. Oh, ain't he precious. He's the star, right? Oh, I think that would be his Joseph. And let's see. What else do you have? Oh, those are the three kings. Oh, yeah. Here we go. The three kings, right Man, here. Man, I know a song about the three kings. You do? How's yeah. it go? Sing it. All right, it goes like this. It goes, We three kings of Orient are tried to smoke a plastic cigar. It was loaded with explosives. That's how we traveled so far. <laughs> See? I don't think that's how the song goes, Zeke. Uh, that's no, how I learned it. No, Zeke, uh, that is not how that song goes. These three kings here, they're the ones that brought gifts to the baby Jesus. Yeah, Remember? that's what I was thinking about. Uh, are we going to learn about them today? Uh, well, no. We're not going to learn about these three kings, but we are going to learn about three kings. Yeah, Mom, let's get this Christmas adventure started. Let's do it. You want to grab our Advent candy, Hope? All right, see. Now be careful. Don't break Hope's special. Wow, candy. <laughs> careful, Man, Zeke. I love candy. Remember to open the number. Careful. Remember to open the number 12. The number 12. Wait, no. It's the day 13. So, the three kings that we're going to learn about today are the first three Jewish kings. Oh, yeah, that, that was after the people said uh, we won't be like everybody else, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and Samuel tried to warn them because God was their king and they didn't want God to be their king anymore. They wanted a king that they could see sitting on a throne. So, who was the first one? Well, the first king of the Jews was named Saul. He was a really tall man, so he looked like a really good king. But he was so scared to become the king that the Bible says when Samuel went to introduce him to the world as here's your king, the Bible said he was hiding. Hiding? Scared? That does not seem like a good king at all. Well... Saul turned out to be a good king for a little while, but then things got bad. Well, uh, what happened? Did he, like, break his friend's teleporter? No. Did he give everyone coal for Christmas? No, he disobeyed God. Uh-oh. Well, we know what happens when people disobey God. Curse it! That's right. God had promised the people, if you follow me, I will bless you. But if you disobey me, I will curse you. Well, did, did God send uh, those frogs again? They go, ribbit, ribbit, <laughs> ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. What did he do? Well, first, he took his presents away from oh, Saul. Oh, no, he took his presents away, man? Ain't that no gifts for Christmas? No, 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 not gifts. Presents. That's what I said, presents. N no, honey, you mean like when you're with him. Like, remember that? Oh, yeah, Emmanuel, I remember that. Emmanuel, God with us, yeah, his presents. Yeah, my, my bad. So God took his presents away from King Saul, and basically King Saul ba would, went crazy when this happened. He would have these times where, like, his brain wouldn't work right. He wasn't in his right man. And God would send a person to him at those times that would play soothing music to calm him down. Man, I can say that because music calms me down sometimes. I've noticed that about you. In this story, the interesting thing is, is that the person that God sent to play that music was actually the person that God had chosen to be the second king of of the Jews. Well, uh, what was his name? I know this one. It was King David, right? Yes. King David was the second king of the Jews. Man, I remember him. He, he wasn't scared like uh, Saul. He, he went out and uh, fought Goliath and hit him in the forehead. 
<laughs> Something like that. Yes. He was just a teenager when he fought the giant Goliath. Did you know that? And do you know what else he fought? What? Didn't he kill a lion? A tiger? A bear? Oh, oh my. my! Well, uh, not exactly like that. He didn't kill a tiger, but he did kill a lion and a bear. Now, that's the kind of king you want. Weren't they trying to attack his sheep? That's exactly right. See, in those days, David, he was the shepherd because in the family, the youngest child took care of the sheep. Oh, yeah. Bah, bah, bah. The Bible talks about sheep and shepherds a lot. There were shepherds to come see baby Jesus after he was born. That's right. And we're going to learn about that in a few days. So, uh, I have a question. Was David a good king? Yeah, did he follow God? Well, that's a very good question. You see, David, he was a good king, but he wasn't perfect. In fact, he had a man killed and stole his wife. What? That sounds like a terrible king. How can you say that he is a good king? Well, the Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart. He did make some big, major mistakes in his life, but he repented of those sins, and he begged God to forgive him. I know God forgives people, but how can a murderer be a man after God's own heart? You know, that's hard to understand. It really is. But you see, God, he forgives all sins. If people will come to him in true conviction and sorrow to repent of their sins, God will forgive them. Did David get punished for what he did? Oh, yes, he did. In fact, his entire family got punished for his sins. Well, that's not fair. Why would they suffer just because their dad sinned? Well, here's the thing. When we sin, we're going to be punished. For every choice we make in life, there's going to be a response for that. It's kind of like when you jump into a pool of water. The person who jumps in gets wet, but the splash affects all the people around you. Oh, yeah. Well, that makes sense. See, his children, they have a lot of problems for the rest of their life because of their dad's sins. There was a lot of jealousy amongst the children. They were arguing over who was going to get to be the king after their dad died. I thought the oldest son was going to be the next king. Yeah. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Well, normally that is how it works, but not this time. The third king of the Jews was not the oldest son. It was actually Solomon. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember him. He was the wisest man to, to ever live, live, to ever live, to ever live. live. The wisest man to ever live, live was king good King Solomon. Solomon. I bet he learned his lesson from watching his dad fall not follow God, and he followed God completely. I wish that were true, Hope, but remember how the rest of the song goes? The next verse says, Solomon made a big mistake, a big mistake, a big mistake. Solomon made a big mistake and made God sad. Remember that? Yeah, he married, married way too, too many wives, too many wives, too many wives. Married way too many wives and made God sad. Oh yeah, and the last verse says, Then he worshipped all, all their gods, all their gods, all their gods. Then he worshipped all their gods and made God mad. Well, that's really bad. Doesn't he know he's going to get in trouble for that? Well, sure he knew. He was the wisest man to ever live. But it just goes to show you that you cannot ever rely on, you know, your own intelligence to lead you in life. You've got to let God show you how to go. I guess that's why God told the people that they did not need a king. Yeah, but they wanted to be like everybody else. See, being like everybody else should never be your goal in life. You need to strive to be who God wants you to be. He has a plan for your life. And if you'll just follow him, everything else will work out. 
And with that, we probably need to close, don't you think? But tomorrow, if you'll come back, we're going to find out that Solomon did do a really good thing in his life. Another day closer to Christmas. I can't wait. Bye! Bye! Bye. Thank you for watching this Christmas adventure as we study the true meaning of Christmas. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to this earth as a baby. He lived here for 33 years. He lived a perfect life. He gave his life on the cross of Calvary so we could be saved. Three days later, he arose from the grave. He remained on this earth for 40 days before he went back into heaven. As he left in a cloud, angels told his disciples Jesus would return to earth one day. This season, as you look forward to celebrating Christmas, pay attention to the feeling of anticipation you feel. Remember the promise, He is coming again. This time, He will not come as a baby, but as a king. May the feeling of joy and anticipation of His second coming be even greater than Christmas. The King is coming.